a Netflix original film. The Wi-Fi is working. In the event of a global communications breakdown, do the following. Stay inside. What just happened here is happening everywhere. Avoid strangers. We've all been deserted. I don't trust them. And most importantly, do not panic. Julia Roberts. What happens next? Mahershala Ali. I knew something was coming. Leave the world behind. Rated R. In select theaters now and on Netflix December 8th. Over 200,000 pounds of food and supplies were stolen from a local donation center, and we're finally learning how it went down. Plus, a candidate for city council is under fire, and the Texas Longhorns are back, baby, and they could potentially help out the Houston economy. Let's talk about the news with producer Carly on Jones. It's Tuesday, December 5th, 2023. I'm Rahil Ramzanali, and here's what Houston's talking about. Okay, Carly, the Houston timeline circle is starting to get complete again because guess what? Before we know it, the rodeo is going to be here, the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo. And they've already started teasing some of the dates and potential acts, right? So we know that it's going to be a lot of country performances, of course, but on certain days, you've got hip hop and rap on March 1st. You've got the big rap night on March 12th. And Houston Rodeo is asking everyone to take a guess at it. Like, who do you think is going to be there? So come on, Carly, tell me, who do you think is going to be there? Give me some guesses. I'm hoping Megan Thee Stallion comes. And, you know, that's just my hope because who doesn't want to see the Houston hottie grace the rodeo stage? I think it's only right. But I feel like she might not be coming just because they don't have many nights where there are like hip hop performances. Like you said, there's like maybe like two nights out of the whole month that the rodeo is there. Um, I think that they think that since Bum B has a day that that's enough, but I feel like we need more like, you know, hip hop and pop nights. There's so many country nights that I'm just like, can we rotate some stuff in and out? Like, please, please. Well, I mean, it it is the rodeo, right? Like you have to have a lot of country acts, but it is overwhelmingly country. Yes. (laughs) As I mentioned, March 1st, hip hop and rap night. And then March 12th rap night that I'm going to assume that's a Bun B night. Mm-hmm. And then you've got a pop night as well. March 15th. I think Meg Thee Stallion is too big for the rodeo, though. You really? have to kind of like consider it as are the acts too big or too small, right? Oh, wow. OK, I don't know. Like, I guess that is a good way to look at it. But she's like really big down here. So I just feel like that's just like only right. Like she has to do it at some point. Yeah. But has Beyonce ever done it? Beyonce has done it, but this was before, like, she really took over. Okay. So this was around the time, I want to say, when her first solo album came out. Okay. And it was 2004, I want to say, because I went to that concert and it was awesome. It was fun. And the other thing to consider is you only get an hour. So you can't bring in too big of a performance mm. because you need three hours with Meg Thee Stallion, right? Okay, yeah. So that's where it gets kind of weird with the Houston Rodeo. It's like you get one hour, boom, you're on, you're off, and that's it. And there's really no big stage set up either. Mm. It's the same stage for everyone. So you have to consider that as well. I don't know who it's going to be, but I can't wait for the release because it's always fun to see who is going to perform. And, you know, maybe there's somebody I want to go see. I don't know. I hope so. I hope so. Hey, let's get to our biggest story for today. What do you have? So a Conroe man got sentenced to 12 years in prison. Forget this. Stealing over 231 thousand pounds of food and household items from a donation center in Willis ISD. This is like so crazy to me because it's not only him, but we also have another Houstonian along with him that did this as well. Um, There were three people who got convicted for this act that they did in 2020, where they basically were volunteers and they were taking stuff like chips, drinks, toasters, blenders, um, shampoo, conditioner, what? toothpaste, bandages, like just everything you can think of, over-the-counter medication. Like they were still in all types of stuff. It was basically to the point where people would drop off donations and these people would basically go load up their truck right after these people, you know, dropped it off a couple hours ago and they were taking it and like basically reselling it at flea markets. So, oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, the Conroe man, his name is Christopher Paul Walker. He is 44 and he pled guilty. Um, he was the last one sentenced in this because the other two, which was Teresa Joyce Harrod, who is also from Willis, 
She is 75 years old. Another man named Samuel Anthony Saldina, he was 52 and he was from Houston. So they were all stealing these household items from the center and the police got tipped off about it. They went and reviewed the surveillance footage, which led them to basically pick them all up because it showed them loading these trucks up with the donations that they were getting. And it's just like, why would you do this? This was for families that were in need. And I'm just like, why would you go steal from these people to go sell it at the flea market? Isn't that crazy? That is, that is (laughs) such a crazy story. And I mean, yeah, you're taking away from families who need it. And, you know, this started in 2020, as you mentioned. So it's right around the time of COVID as well, where a lot of families were struggling, you know, people weren't working. So you're really taken away from families in need in such a dire time. I cannot believe this story. And I'm glad that they caught him. And, you know, what happens now, right? Like, you can't go back in time and give these things to the families that need them. So people are already hurt by this, but at least there's going to be some justice here. Yeah, Teresa was sentenced to 10 years. And then Samuel was sentenced to five years in prison. And Christopher got 12 years, as I mentioned earlier. Well, I'm hoping that this, like, you know, justice is actually served here, but this is just so crazy. I'm really more concerned about the 75-year-old that did this because this is someone's grandma. I'm I'm just imagining, like, can you imagine, like, someone's grandma just (laughs) committing theft? Man, that is... (laughs) That is so wild. Now, all three were uh, ordered to pay restitution. So hopefully the Willis ISD Center can get some money back. And in addition, the Montgomery County Food Bank will get some of that money as well. But that is a wild story for sure. And I'm I'm like blown away by this right now. But look, (laughs) hey, grifters are going to grift, man. And people are going to do some wild things in time of need. So I'm just I'm shocked that it happened. Okay. My biggest story, and I know we've got the runoff election going on right now. Early voting is ongoing, and we've got election day coming up on December 9th. But there's really not many big headlines from the actual city council races and seats. But District H is like, hold up, we've got something here for you. Because Houston City Council candidate Cynthia reyes Rivia sent out a, quote, homophobic dog whistle, end quote, flyer calling her opponent, not a man of faith with a mm. picture of him and his husband while Cynthia's side of the flyer has her and her family. So this oh is crazy. God. She's running against Mario Castillo, who received almost 47% of the votes in the November 7th election. He didn't get past that majority, so they had to go to a runoff. Now, Reyes Rivia received about 25%. And this flyer is causing a lot of issues, in fact, to the point where Harris County Sheriff Ed Gonzalez on Saturday said that he withdrew his endorsement of Cynthia because her campaign's inexcusable attack on our LGBTQ plus community. Um, This is nuts. Like, why, why are we doing this in 2023? Why are we attacking people's choices? What are we doing here? That is crazy. Like, why did she think that that was going to help her campaign at all? It's actually just so insensitive and just so crazy to even think that someone would literally go and make a flyer and then post the flyer publicly to think that this was going to help her in an election. That's actually, that's sickening. Honestly, it's really sickening. So check this out. Bob Stein, who's a political science professor at Rice University, said calling out sexual preferences in election campaign has long been part of local politics. He also said he doesn't think that the message distributed by Reyes Revia campaigns will have a significant impact in the runoff results. So it's not going to hurt her. It's not going to help her. This was just really bad headlines more than anything Mm -hmm. for the candidate who is already trailing big time from the first results of the election, right? Like she was down almost 20%. And the only reason she's in this runoff race is because Castillo was unable to get the majority of the votes. So it's like, come on, I I know you're trailing right now, but really, is this the game we're going to play here? Maybe she's thinking about like, you know, like all publicity is good publicity if you just, you know, get the attention of people. So Mm -hmm. maybe that's what she's going for here just to like get her name more out there. But I think you're drawing the wrong attention. Like that is just not what we want to be doing. We've moved past this type of thing. It's literally, like you said, 2023. Let's be better people and just love everybody. Like this is crazy. Especially if you're trailing, right, Carly? Like the attention is great, right? Like any headline is a great headline. If you're up and people are talking about you, that's fine. You're trailing. You're trying to get actual votes from District H. This isn't going to help you, in my opinion, right? Like, you want to do something that could really help you get some votes during early voting right now or on Election Day on December 9th. So 
yeah, I don't know. I was just blown away by this, but it's a, you know, local politics, baby. Like, who is your PR rep that told you this was a good idea? I yeah. want to talk to this person. This is horrible. Okay. That's, yeah, that's crazy. Yep. Yep. And now the campaign has been really hot and heavy. There have been attacks on both sides, but this is the first one where you're like, oh, mm-hmm. we're calling somebody a, not a man of faith because of this. Like, come on. That's kind of weird here. Like, let's stop that. Okay, let's do some rapid fire stories. Okay, Carly, I'm so excited to get your opinions on some of these stories. Now, over the weekend, I was browsing social media when I saw this place I've gone to before called Meat and Cheese, and they were being kicked out by Railway Heights Market along with the remaining three food vendors. Now, if you haven't been to Railway Market, think of it like post-Houston, but in the Heights. Okay, This huge space had so much potential, but it never caught fire like Post did. It initially did but it just never like sustained it. It had restaurants and cool stores. And it was such a cool area to kind of guide us out of the pandemic, right? It opened two years ago. And this was like, okay, we can get back to life. And there are these cool spots. Let's go hit them up. Let's support local businesses. And it just never like really got going. In fact, you know, a lot of places inside the vendors are saying that, you know, the rent is too high. There's not enough people coming here. And it just kind of fell apart. And over the weekend was the final domino where they just kicked everybody out. They're like, look, you got to get out of here by Monday and we are done. And we're going to like reoperate as an event space slash beer hall. So there are still plans to keep the place going, but the way they just kicked out the last few vendors, Carly, after they asked them to stay open in November, is shady. Wait, so they, they're they just like kicking people out. These people aren't leaving by themselves. They're just like, like, no, mm-hmm. you got to go. Yeah, they're just like, you're out. Oh, wow. you're, you know what? You're, you're leaving. We're, we're done with you guys up here because we have to redo this. We have to figure out how to make this place work. I can't imagine like putting so much money into like a business and trying to get a business started and then just being like put out without even like having the opportunity to be like, mm-hmm. you know, I want to close this down myself. That's actually crazy. But I've never heard of this place. I will admit I've never heard of it. So I can kind of see why it might be trying to figure out like how to rebrand and make some more money as the like for the actual business as a whole but that sucks for those individual owners like yeah yeah, oh my gosh yeah and that's the thing so the owner of meat and cheese said as much he's like i'm losing money here like there's nobody coming here and this is hard but he wanted to sustain the business this is his business right like he wanted to keep it afloat but there's just nobody coming there there's no reason to go there and as you mentioned nobody was talking about it Mm. right everyone talks about post houston and this place is just as big and just as cool. Wow. But again, nobody went there. And this is, you know, unfortunately, people just got kicked out now. Well, we got to tell Meat and Cheese to go try to get a place in Post because, you know, we know Post is popping. I was just there the other day yeah. <laughs> and there's a Yo-Yo's in there now. So yeah, just move over there. <laughs> yeah. How about that? Shout out to Yo-Yo's. Got an institution and they have uh, a brick and mortar now inside Post. Mm-hmm. It was really cool. That was the first time I ever had it. What'd you think? I liked it. I didn't know that they only sold like one type of hot dog. So I was interested in that. I was like, oh, yep. okay. Like there's no choices, <laughs> but yeah. but I did like it though. It was really good. That's awesome. That's good. I'm so happy for them as well. Okay. My second story for you is another food related story, but a little bit different. Okay. Aranda's Bakery is a Houston institution and somebody stole the iconic Panadero statue. <laughs> now, this statue on airline is iconic. Everyone sees it. So what happened was this truck pulls up, takes the statue, and everyone thought it was like mounted into the ground and anchored in. And it, it really was like you could just pick it up. It only weighs 45 pounds. They took it all the way up to San Antonio. Then they eventually brought it back to the city of Houston and they took it to bombshells on Southwest Freeway and people were taking pictures with it. And it was just like the wildest thing. This little cute statue that represents Aranda's Bakery was getting pictures taken with the Houston Astros chain on. It was wild. So everything is good. No criminal charges are being filed. Everything has worked out. So Carly, let's have some fun with this. If you had the Panadero statue, where are you taking it for the day? Oh, hmm. Okay. If I was to lug a 45 pound statue around, um, I feel like it should go by the be someone, like the bridge. <laughs> okay. I feel like it should be somewhere everybody can like pass by and see it. Or um, I'm trying to think, or maybe I might take it to the beach for the day. Take it to Galveston. Yeah, let it have wouldn't a that be cool? Lay out in the sand. 
Yeah, put you know what? Take it on the Bolivar Ferry. Let it have a little ride there. Hang out on Galveston. Maybe take it on a ride on the Pleasure Pier. I don't know, yeah. but yeah, like let's give it a good trip here. And that's what the the person who stole it was like. Hey, I grew up coming here. And I had to go use the restroom. I saw the statue and I said, you know what? I want to take him out on a vacation. Oh, that's crazy. (laughs) That's like, well, you're stealing. Yeah. At the end of the day, it is theft. Okay. Now, Aranda's Bakery was cool enough not to press charges. And it actually probably helped him with the headlines because everyone's talking about Mm -hmm. it. But yeah, that that that's such a wild story that you can just pick up the statue and go, and hopefully nobody else replicates this because you know there's going to be copycats. Yeah, no. Now they have to go and make sure they can put it in the ground like without it moving at this point. <laughs> oh my gosh! All right, final story for you, Carly, and I'm going to bring a little sports into this, okay? Because it was a big weekend of college football stories. The biggest one being that our Texas Longhorns made the college football playoffs. What? Yep, Mm -hmm. that's right. Hook'em Horns are number three in the nation. Now, Carly, why is this important to the city of Houston? Well, if they win their semifinal game against Washington in New Orleans on January 1st, which they're favored to do, by the way, they're going to be playing right here at NRG in the championship game on January 8th against the winner of Alabama and Michigan. Just think about what that's going to do for the local economy and think about how wild the city is going to be if the Texas Longhorns are playing for a title right here in NRG. Oh, that would be so exciting. I would have to get tickets. And I know they're going to be expensive, but I'm going to try to at least go tailgate it or something because I love our Texas Longhorns. And I'm so excited that they're, we're finally in a season where we're like winning again. It's been a while. It's been mm-hmm. a while. So this is like yep. hype, like especially that we get to play like in Houston where it's close by. And I'm hoping that we win that because then after that, the city is like on fire. Well, potentially. Yeah. We still got to beat Washington in the semifinal game in New Orleans. Mm-hmm. You still got to win that one. And then if they do, then yeah, if they win the title in Houston. Oh, gosh. Oh, man. Because we know, look, our alumni base here is one of the biggest. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dallas and Houston have the two of the biggest alumni base for UT. So, oh, my gosh, it would be crazy. Yes. Now, let's not forget our cousins at College Station, Texas A&M. They're also going to be playing here at NRG in the Texas Bowl against Oklahoma State, the team the Texas Longhorns beat in the Big 12 championship game, just blew them out. That's going to be on December 27th. And look, Texas A&M has a huge base here as well. So that'll be awesome for our economy and for everyone here as well to have the Aggies here. And then the final story, how about this? The University of Houston officially announced Willie Fritz as their new head coach after they fired Dana Holgerson. So a lot of college football stories here to end rapid fire. I'm glad that U of H got a new coach. Um, I hope that that goes well for them and that they can turn their program around. But I'm still laughing at you calling A&M our um, cousins because, no, we have beef. A little cousin. We have beef. <laughs> I don't think UT and A&M could ever be friends. <laughs> They're not cousins. Our little cousins. You got to call them little cousins. <laughs> Hey, you know, we're playing them again next year, right? Starting in November. I can't wait. Yep. Yes, I can't wait. I I'm so excited for that game. I cannot wait. Oh my wait. gosh, it's going to be so fun. And that's going to be on the Black Friday weekend. So it's back in that traditional Thanksgiving weekend game. Oh, it's going to be so much fun. My best friend works at Tex Ags, David Nuno. And he and I always beef about A&M and Longhorns. And mm-hmm. I, you know what? I'm going to give him a call today and just let him know that we're in the college football playoffs before they got in. Yep. And by the way, this is the last year of the college football playoffs before college football moves to a 12-team playoff. So if the Longhorns win the final CFP title, gonna you big. know we're going to be annoying. Exactly. We're going to be relentless. All right. <laughs> can't wait. I can't wait. <laughs> Hey, Carly, before we end and get out of here, I'm going to give you the space to get whatever's on your mind, off your chest, whatever you need to do. This is your space. Okay. So this time and weather, it's just like, it's bringing me down, y'all. I'm just like been sick on and off like for the past couple weeks. It's like, I'll have a couple days where I feel decent. And then the next couple days, I'm just like down and out. And like this weekend, I could barely move out of the bed. And what's bothering me about this is that Christmas is around the corner and I have not picked up one gift, not one. And I'm just like, I feel like I'm running out of time, but it's like every second when you get off work, by the time you get off, it's dark outside. It's gloomy. You're tired. It's too cold. Like I'm over it. I'm over it already. Like, can we get some sunlight please? So that can come back to life. Cause right now 
I feel like a vampire. Yeah, it is tough. And of course, with it getting darker, it does impact your health and it does get gloomy. You just feel so out of it. I'll give you some tips that have helped me. Ooh, yes. Number one, you got to work out. Okay, like you got to get in a workout. I know it sucks going after work and it's dark and those birds are outside and making that noise. You're just like, I just want to sit inside and not do anything. <laughs> exactly. But like even 35 minutes, 40 minutes will help your body just get going and moving. It just helps the rest of the week out for me at least. Mm -hmm. Um, and then drink a lot of water. I don't know why, but that helps me. I know that's like a hydration thing, but I always drink a lot of water and that just gives me that little extra energy. This is just my mm -hmm. little tips that I do, okay? But yeah, you have to get moving. I think you have to move. Okay, okay. I'm going to try. I'm going to start off with like an at-home workout so that can like get me back in the swing. And then after that, maybe I can try to like transition to the gym, go outside a little bit more because right now I've been down, y'all. I'm just dragging along yeah. no you got to get out of the house you got everyone you look you got to leave you got to leave the house all okay. right even if it's 5 30 and it's starting to get dark go outside go to a park and just be outside with nature because the weather is nice this week so it's not gonna be too cold or anything like that get outside and do it okay i'm gonna try your tips out this week and i'll let y'all know okay. how i am afterwards <laughs> Okay, good. That's what I'm talking about. Hey, look, just try it out. That's all I'm asking. Mm -hmm. All right. For me, I, I just want to talk about this real quickly because a new study found that Texas teachers are making about $8,000 less than the national average in annual salaries. And many are taking second jobs to stay afloat. And we've mm -hmm. always heard that, look, teachers have to work two jobs just to survive around here. But, you know, it's so frustrating because lawmakers were trying to get teachers a cost of living adjustment, which was going to be like a hundred bucks a month, right? Like that's not really that much, but it's something, mm -hmm. right? But that bill didn't pass during the special session. And I wanted to bring this to the table because our teachers do so much during the year. And especially if you have kids, you understand how hard it is being a teacher, what they do and what they provide for the students and children in our neighborhood and in our city and our state. So we should be celebrating them with a, a pay raise that is, you know, just a national average. Like, mm -hmm. can we just give them what everybody else is getting? But instead, we're focusing on vouchers for private schools that wouldn't benefit everybody. Mm -hmm. And in fact, it could hurt a lot of children, right? It'll benefit some. But I think the happier teachers are, the more committed they are to their craft, to their profession. It's going to help our communities out. So I just want to bring that to the table. Mm -hmm. And look, with somebody who has multiple friends and family as teachers, you hear their struggles. So many are on the brink of leaving the profession that it is frustrating to hear that we're not doing our best here at the state level. Yeah, I will say like before I started working at CityCast, I was working at a school and I lasted like a month and I had to leave. I was just like, this is too much work. I will tell you like they work so hard throughout the day, barely yeah. get a break. And I mean, it's already hard for the parents out there. I'm not a parent, but I know that it's hard to raise like one kid or two kids. Imagine having to deal with 30 multiple times a day. Like so you're switching out five rounds, probably maybe six, seven classrooms of 30 kids a day trying to control attitudes and then also come up with like what you're supposed to be teaching them. It, it's just so much. And it's like so much yeah. effort that goes into it and they're not paid enough for it at all. And we really need them. It's like so many people are quitting because they're not feeling appreciated. And I understand that. And I feel so bad for them because I know how much work goes into it. So I really hope that we can like fix this somehow because there's so much money that goes into mm -hmm. other things. There's billions of dollars everywhere else. And then we have teachers that are like struggling to survive. Having to get a second job is crazy when you do that much work already. Yeah, especially after everything you just mentioned, like they just spend all day managing all these personalities and kids mm -hmm. and all that stuff. And at, then you're like, I got to go drive Uber or I got to yeah. go do DoorDash or whatever it is just to be able to afford living here. It's it's wild. And, uh, you know, I, I just wish that we could fix that issue because teachers are awesome mm -hmm. and they do so much for our community and have such a great impact, not only right now for the kids in their class, but throughout their life. Exactly. Right? Like think about the teachers that impacted your life. And, you know, we need more good teachers and we need happy teachers because then they stay in the profession. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Teachers are leaving a lot quicker now because when I was younger, I would have teachers who have been there for like 30 and 40 years. I don't see that anymore. Like when I go meet like my brother's yeah. school teachers and stuff like that, they're all young and they've only been there a few years and they're already ready to dip out. <laughs> it's so bad. It's so bad. It's bad. All right, Carly, that was a lot of fun. Thank you so much. And here's to a good week here on CityCast Houston. All right. See you all next time. 
That was Carly on Jones. All the stories we talked about are linked in our show notes. Now, before we go, did you know you can find Houston life hacks on our website? We have you covered. Just go to houston.citycast.fm to find them all. That will do it for today. Thank you for listening, and I hope you learned something new. What is his name? Hold on, what was the name? I said her name, and then I said the last name of the other man. I told y'all I'm crazy today. I'm really tired. So hold on, let me see.